Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi Alaikum salam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what is the best dua to ask on the night of desires as it is one of the night when Allah accepts all prayers Please forgive us and dress us with blessings of Latayl al-Raghaib InshaAllah, Allah bless you, your family and all your, your community and the dua that we recited at the beginning of the event, Dua Mandur that this is dua from Sultan al-Awliya and Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghestani they say it's common, it's, it's for the intention of these Sultan and awliyas that Ya Rabbi as muhibbeen and ashiqeen of these awliyaullah, they're our fathers, they are our spiritual fathers that grant us an inheritance from their reality as we recite as what they gave to us like the child who wears his father's shoes. What dua are you going to make that has any significance? But when you go home and you see your child is wearing your shoes and imitating you, wearing your clothes and imitating you, it's a sign of love and respect that they give to us and say, recite what I sent to you and gave to you, that's enough for you. And when you recite it and you know that what we started off with, we're da'if, we didn't know anything. But Ya Rabbi, these are big awliya, we're reciting this is the inheritance they gave to us on these apps and these du'as and these books that with their intention, not mine, with their intention grant us. They immediately intercede as you're making that du'a and they begin to make the du'a in Allah's presence and in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad because you be with whom you love. As soon as you love them and then it's given, oh we love them, look you came all this way for love. It's given now. Anything you do out of that love, they're with you. You'll be with whom you love. It's established, that love becomes established means they're always with you. As soon as you start to make the du'a, your tongue is fumbling, your heart is, heart is maybe not so sincere about it but they're there and they immediately begin to make that du'a. And that du'a is different when they're making it in Allah's presence and in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad These are the ni'mat and the blessings of reciting from holy people, Allah tanzir rahmah Anytime you mention holy people, do the wazifas and awrads of holy people, those holy people are with you and immediately they begin to make that du'a with their sincerity, with… Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Their station because you imitate a people, you'll be from them. Just like if you imitate bad people, you all of a sudden you're getting all the badness of that person's actions. But the same as if you imitate a good people, you'll be with them and those good people begin to pray for you, begin to intercede for you and this is our belief system. And that's why we do all of these actions and we recite whatever they gave to us, inshaAllah. As alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum as salam Please forgive my ignorance and bad adab. Could you please expand on the meaning of nur ala nur? Nur ala nur? <coughs> light upon light. <coughs> my throat. InshaAllah, light upon light. <laughs> Thank you for the question. It's a bit, uh, yeah. It, it can go in every direction, there's no end to it. So light upon light is, 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 is a dress in our lives. It's like somebody says that uh, I showered 
and they shower only once in their lifetime. I showered, it's enough. But the concept is, no, you have to wash all the time. So Allah gave us that concept through wudu, continuously wash. Because Western people, they say, I took a shower, I can just go pray now. I say, no, 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 shower is, doesn't mean anything for us, we'll wash again. Because you've made yourself dirty from that time to the next time you want to pray. Wash and wash and wash and Allah Prophet described that every time you make wudu is a light upon light. That the water, when you make an intention to wash, it's a light. You see water, Allah is dressing with light. Because by means, everything is a, is a means to something. So how somebody is going to know what light is? Is enough for you, put that water all over you. Wash your hands, your face, wash your feet, make sure that your body parts are clean and washed. Why? It's a light. And if you have doubt that your wudu is good, it's light upon light, go do it again. So it means the concept for us that Prophet was giving to us is that hold water like it's light. Dress from it, wash with it, drink from it. And everything you do has immense barakahs. So once they become familiar with wudu, it psychologically prepares them in the realities of light. They want to be clean, they want to be glowing. And light takes away darkness. So every time there's a bad energy, put more light on you. How are you going to put light? I'll give the secret in water. Then later awliya will come and explain, my water is a tremendous power because Allah said, my throne is upon my, upon water. So there must be an immense power in H2O, right? What about H2OO? Oh oh, must be a power, immense power. <coughs> But that's a different subject. <laughs> so there is a secret in my and it's angelic. So anytime you put this on, it's an angelic reality and it becomes for us light upon light, light upon light. First thing you do when you wake up is you drink water and it sort of replenishes all the organs. Before you do anything else, drink water and give the body, the organs, everything a time to capture that light and to heal. So it means has many, many different realities. Once they become familiar with the system of light upon light, light upon light, then everything they begin to subsequently add, oh I should make more zikr, oh because that's a light too. But you became familiar with that light when you were using water and understanding the concept of water. But everything we do has light over light over light. That's why make as many salawats as you can. It's a light that as soon as you say, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad, it's a beautiful green light that comes back onto the servant. And you can never get enough light, especially in this very dark world, inshaAllah. Allah gives us all these opportunities to illuminate our reality, inshaAllah. Uh, this question has been asked every week, keeps asking, so we're going to ask. Okay. Uh, as salaamu alaykum, Sayyidi. <laughs> Wa alaykum as salaam wa uh, Please forgive our ignorance. Can you please expand on the understanding of Sayyidina Muhammad in all universes? Does it mean there's always Sayyidina Adam to Prophet hmm. well, Didn't we answer that when we started the talk? You know, when you're too busy trying to ask a question, it's nice, it's thank you very much. But we, what did we start the talk with tonight? Where are all the universes? They're in Muhammadun Rasulullah What are we talking about then? Any universe that comes into existence from now to the end of time, where does it come into existence? Muhammadun Rasulullah is the sultan then. Everything is under the dominion, Bahr al-Muhit, the all-encompassing ocean. The meme of Muhammad is the all-encompassing ocean in which Allah put every reality within that reality to keep it in tawheed. If not, it would have been, let's say, a billion creations. 
then where Allah would be? Inside a billion of them, then that would be a billion Allahs, right? So it has to be one circle, one ocean of creation and which is the ocean of creation, anciently Bahr al-Muhit, the all-encompassing ocean. And Allah is the creator of that existence, comes into existence like one cell. So how we came into our life? Because you see it on the large, you see it on the small. So look at a cell. A cell starts one, power comes. Then all of a sudden that same circle breaks into two, breaks into four, breaks into eight, breaks into six. It's the same circle but inside is breaking and it's still the same circle. That Allah is describing for us that when you look small or you look large, then you look large and you say, okay I see this, this planet, I see these galaxy. Then they zoom out into this Milky Way, they zoom out again they see all the universes are all within a circle. And there's a center power, a center star. So that they taught that everything and the awliya would sing it, everything is in the nukht. It's just one cell. The nukht hits the dot, the qalam put a nukht and if you put the nukht under a microscope it expands. And the secret of a circle has infinite expansion. Right? But the center is always one, tawheed. It can expand infinitely and the center is one. Why? Because the points on the circumference are expanding and they all have an equal access to the center point. So it means they found when they zoomed out of our galaxy, it looked like one cell. When we look at it, it looks crowded. But as soon as you zoomed it out, it all of a sudden all of it came down to looking like one cell. And then when they looked at one cell, it was the same image. So wherever we go, the secret is in the circle and it infinitely expands. So no matter how many atoms, how many universes, uh, how many galaxies, it's still that one dot, one nukht. And all of this creation is in one nukht known to you as ba. Where's the nukht? It's in the ba. One center means that whatever aliens come, whatever planet they came from, whatever they claim there's nothing but La ilaha illallah. Whatever they tell us, want to tell people, nothing. It's under the dominion of La ilaha illallah and all exist within Muhammadun Rasulullah and what they call Insan al-Kamil is the perfected reality of creation, inshaAllah. But it goes deeper that confuses people. That's good. One cell, one nukht. As salaamu alaykum Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullah. See, what is the reality of philosophy? Is it okay to read and learn from or is it haram? No, can't say haram because that's so vague. Because according to my son, everything is philosophy. <laughs> uh, every talk I have, he says, is yours philosophy. Yes, it's my philosophy. But, <laughs> but philosophers are are always giving a hypothesis and this is where the danger is when people don't have a, 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 a strong spiritual belief in which we describe that there are also truths. You can hypothesize and that's when we gave this story of the, the people of the prison where the… who was it? Plato? The story of the prisoners that they had a fire behind them, they're all chained up and all they can see on a wall is shadows. And they spent their days and nights locked up because they've been tortured with the fire behind them and all they see in their life is shadows on a wall. And they have so many interpretations, so many stories of these shadows and they become experts 
in shadow stories but they're locked up staring at a wall. One of them gets out, he's released from the prison, he goes up the stairs and all of a sudden it's a beautific garden with sunlight and beautific views and whole different reality, oceans and streams and he's mesmerized. I was spending all my life interpreting shadows, we didn't know anything there. Look at what I'm seeing, this, is, this existence is beyond imagination. So all awliyaullah had the same story, that it was a prison, it was a cave, whatever it is means when Allah opens His heavenly kingdom and expands their horizon and their vision, they realize whatever they understood here were shadow stories. <coughs> Philosophers are good at that, they tell a lot of shadow stories. And they don't believe anyone has gotten out, right? They don't have the element of belief. So in, in Islam the belief in awliya is that Allah can make many of them get out of this prison, what they call their matrix, right? By seclusions, mawt qabl al mawt and Prophet trained his holy companions and they achieved that. <clears throat> if they reach a state of death, Allah opens for them, I see your and I hear your footsteps in paradise and all of these signs that Prophet was giving to us of the holy companions that they walk in paradise. So they saw these lights, they saw these realities, they're no longer talking about shadows, they're talking about haqqaiqs. But a shadow talker? That's like philosophy, it's oh from this to this, this to this and if you ask them, have you seen anything, do you train with anything? So no, 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 none of that matters. It's just from one hypothesis to the next until somebody proves them wrong on something else. So on certain to topics it's okay but in spirituality with their actual truths where Allah opens for the servant the world of light the world of seclusions, the world of, of the, the punishment of the grave. They can have a philosophy that there's no punishment in the grave and that this is just to scare people and the concept of God was to scare and to regulate and control people. And then a shaykh will talk about he was put into seclusion and he had 40 days of torment and which he saw in his grave like a grave and that every action he brought into, his, into that khalwa, into that locked room, everything of his character he brought into that room, it began to manifest and attack him and come after him. So he understood then energy is very real and what you bring into the grave of your energy and your actions, God will make it to come alive and each will begin to manifest to come after you. So no, it's no longer philosophy, it's real, it's true but you know they'll say no because they don't believe it, they don't want to train. You come with us if you're a philosopher, train for 30-40 days and you're going to see hell and you'll understand exactly what we're talking about because it's not a philosophy anymore, inshaAllah. We have still the khatam to do inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzatam an yasifoon wa salaamu ala al-mursaleen muhammadillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Narjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. As Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh.